And I've, I've titled this, uh, this message is actually called Peace in the Midst of Storm, of the Storm. And, and why I'm saying it's, uh, you know, it's a message to myself, personal, uh, is because I've been kind of shocked, or not shocked, disappointed uh, in the fact that how easy I can lose my peace. And, uh, and so, uh, as I was going through the Word, just writing scriptures down just to reinforce my own, my own uh, strength in my own self, I guess, in the Lord through His Word about His peace and His promises that He has that regardless of what's going on, regardless of the circumstances, that we can walk in that place of peace. And I'm going to start with a, a uh, this quote, and I'm probably going to end with it too, but it says, before you have authority or power over the storm, you must have peace in the storm. So again, before you have power or authority over the storm, you must have peace in the storm. And I want to start with uh, in John chapter 16, if you open your Bibles there. I'm going to use a, a, actually a verse that I used last week. To kind of tip off, and I've kind of put these verses uh, in order. So as we, we go through the New Testament, we're starting John, and we're going to go through several verses. But but they're in order. We'll just work through in John 16 again, verse uh, 33. And again, of course, this is Jesus speaking, and it says, "I have told you these things." So that in me you may have peace. Now in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So it's almost a a two-part promise. The first promise is not that cool. It says in this world you will have trouble. So as we're talking about even some trouble that may be coming in the future here, the troubled times we're living now, but even just in your own personal life, on in again in a normal setting, normal time, you will have trouble or you will have tribulation, and that's a promise. But the other part is that that he says, "Take heart, that I have overcome the world." And so, regardless of what we may be facing or things that are coming against us, that we can take heart that He has overcome. The world. Well, we're in John, let's go to John chapter 14. And I want to look at verse 27. And again, these are just verses to, to reinforce uh, the peace of the Lord. That we get to that place where we can walk in it no matter what circumstances are going on. We don't lose our peace. And we're going to look at verse 27. And again, Jesus is is talking to his disciples, and he says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So Jesus says, Peace I live with you, and my peace I give you. So something has been given to us as if you believe in the Lord, if you've given your heart to the Lord, there's something the Lord has for each of us to walk in that peace. A, a, a peace, later on as we look at the verse, it says that passes all understanding. A shalom, that, that word shalom means an overall peace, an overall well-being of each of us. And again, regardless of what the circumstances, whether the circumstances are good or whether the circumstances are bad. But he has a promise. He says, peace I live, I leave with you, and peace I give you. We have been given that peace, but it's up to us to develop it and to walk in it. You don't have to turn there, but Isaiah 9, 6 says, uh, it's describing the names of the Lord. He says, he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of peace. So he is, one of his titles is he is the Prince of Peace. That he gives us peace. 
That's part of his character is peace, that's shalom. Now let's work our way back towards Romans chapter 14. So just skip past Acts to Romans chapter 14. And verse 27. I'm sorry, Romans 14, verse 17, not 27. You might have trouble finding that. And throughout uh, chapter 14, he, he's, he's comparing the, you know, the law and to the new covenant. And, and he comes to this point, he says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom that we live in, the kingdom that we're supposed to exhibit is of righteousness, or another word would be holiness, but peace and also joy in the Holy Spirit. So those are attributes that the Holy Spirit gives us that we can walk in. Righteousness, peace, and joy. And all of those things we have to develop. We don't naturally, as we come in the kingdom, uh, we may be pretty shy on one of the others. But as we begin to develop that, as we begin to proclaim those things, we begin to walk in the fullness of that. So righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit is what we need to be living in, walking in. Now in Romans, just turn over to Romans 16. And verse 20, and as Paul is speaking to the church at, at Rome, and it says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Now, you would have thought he would have used the term, you know, God Almighty or God Lord of the host, or one of the title is of the Lord is the Lord of the armies. And yet he says, no, it's the God of peace that's going to crush Satan under your feet. It's that peace. It's that shalom. It's walking in that place of peace, again, regardless of the circumstances, that crush Satan, the enemy's plan, which is to bring strife in your life, bring stress into your life, bring anxiety into your life, bring fear into your life. And yet it says the peace of God will crush Satan under your feet, if we're walking in that peace. Okay, turn over to Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse 22. Again, this is a very familiar verse with most of us. And Paul is saying that, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, there is no law. So the fruit of the Spirit, again, is love, it's joy, it's peace. It's patience, it's kindness, it's goodness, it's faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Now, an interesting thing is that, that gifts, to separate gifts from fruit, gifts are given. The Lord gives you a gift. Fruit is grown, which means when you come in the kingdom, you may be shy on all of those things. And so, but it has to be grown in your own life. You have to apply yourself. You have to discipline yourself. You have to begin to pursue those things so that the fruit should be continually growing in your life of these things. Self-control, peace, of love, all those things should be growing in our life, but they have to be grown. We don't naturally have that within us. 
But as the Holy Spirit begins to change and we begin to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, we begin to develop these fruits in our life. Now, as we keep going towards your right, past Ephesians, the Philippians, chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, we're going to look at verses 6 and 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So that first part is, is a pretty big statement. Do not be anxious about anything. And if you think about that, okay, wow, that's quite a challenge, isn't it? Do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and supplication, make your requests known to the Lord. And then what does it say? The peace of God, which passes all understanding. And so that peace is a, it's a supernatural peace. It's not a peace as the world gives. You know, it does not, again, depend upon your circumstances. It's a supernatural peace that you could be in, in the midst of the worst storm, and yet you could be walking in peace, which would be contrary to our human, our natural nature. You know, I think of Jesus as he was in the, you know, the boat. He was sleeping in the boat. They're out. Sea of Galilee, there's a great storm going on. And, and, and if you think about it, the disciples were professional fishermen. So they're not like amateurs. They're familiar with the lake. They know what storms are. And as the, as the boat is almost starting to get swamped, you know, they go out to the Lord. Lord, we're, we're going to perish. Don't you care? We're about to perish. And he's sleeping. So he's in a place of perfect peace. And he gets up and he rebukes the storm. But again, he had... He had peace in the storm, and then he took authority over the storm. And so, again, it's a supernatural peace we're looking for, a peace that passes all understanding. And that's another one just for you to, you know, to claim, to memorize some of these scriptures. And you're in that place where you find yourself getting anxious. You just say, Lord, you've not given me spirit. A fear, you have not given me, I'm to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, I'm making my requests known to you. And that supernatural peace that passes all understanding. All right, the next one is Colossians chapter 3. So it's the next book over. And we're going to look at verse 15 through 17. And it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart. But again, in verse 15, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. So we have a choice there. We have a command to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. Not to let the anxiety, not to let the fear, the chaos that may be going on, but to walk in that place of, of again, of peace, of that shalom, that peace that passes all understanding. Okay, next we're going to Second Thessalonians, chapter 3.
and we're going to look at verses, actually just verse 16. And as he's closing his letters to the Thess- Thessalonians, he says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you. So Paul almost always opens his letters to all the different churches. He says, you know, grace and peace to you. And as he ends this one, he said, now may the Lord of peace, again, that the Lord, you know, we talk about, you know, the Lord is, is love. Well, he's also just as much peace. And so we need to receive that peace from him. Again, that peace that passes all understanding. And may he give you peace at all times and in every way. So in other words, we're supposed to live in that place of being in peace. And that's a lot easier to preach than it is to live out. And so it's something we have to apply ourselves to. And like I say, I feel like, you know, I have failed many times with that. How often I can get out of peace so quickly because of a circumstance. Something happens and, and I, what, you know, and I, and I lose that peace. And when you lose that peace, you're not really, you're not necessarily thinking clearly. You're not really seeking the Lord. You can't be, you know, you're, you're stirred up. And we need to be at a place where we can just be at peace and rest in the Lord and wait on the Lord. Okay, let's go to 2 Timothy. Let's go 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, the next book. Again, this is a, a familiar verse, chapter 1, 7. Probably many of you have this memorized. It says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear or timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. So God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. So you know when you feel that anxiety or when you feel that, that fear begin to come upon you, you know that's not from the Lord, that that's from the enemy. And, of course, the enemy wants to steal our peace. So that's another one to, to, uh, to memorize, to quote, and whenever you begin to feel those things, you begin to feel anxiety. You begin to feel fear come upon you. That's when you quote those things. You, you state it. You proclaim it out into the atmosphere and to the spirits. The Lord has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22 It says, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So he says, pursue righteousness or holiness. Pursue faith. Pursue love and peace. So we need to pursue it. We need to go after it. We need to apply ourselves to find that place where we can walk in that place of perfect peace. So again, peace is not, it's not contingent upon your circumstances. It's whether things are going well or things are not going well, whether it was a phone call you received, but to be able to walk in that place of perfect peace peace. And so I want to end this kind of with the same thing I started with. You know, before you can have authority or power in the storm or over the storm, you must have peace in the storm. Once you can develop to get to the place where you can be at peace in the middle of a storm, then you're going to have authority or you're going to have a power to actually speak to that storm, whether that's a physical storm, whether it's a, 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 a storm of circumstances, 
situations that are going on in your life. But once you have peace in that, then you're going to have authority to speak to that situation. So, Lord, we, we just thank you, Lord, that you are the God of peace, that you're the one who gives peace. You give us the peace that passes all understanding. And, Lord, I ask for your help for myself, for those who are in this room right now, Lord, that you would impart that peace. Lord, you are the prince of peace. And, Lord, with the changing things that are going on in the world and the storms that are yet coming our way, I ask, Lord, that you would give us peace, that in the midst of those things, we're in the center of your will, we're in the center of peace, of that shalom, filling your presence. So, Lord, I ask, Lord, impart that supernatural gift, that gift of peace that passes all understanding. And, Lord, help us to grow in it, to apply ourselves, to train ourselves, to walk in that place of peace and of your presence. So, Lord, we know you are faithful and you are good. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.